powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manobuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Obweda. Glory be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. And today we are sharing on overcoming every emotional pain. If you are watching this broadcast, this is Pray and Prophesy to your day. And today as we look at overcoming every emotional pain, Sometimes we could go through a situation that could lead to emotional crisis and uh, things like uh, situations like depression, situations like loneliness, frustration, internal pain, and situations where it looks like there is no way out in the natural. But today, I'm teaching on overcoming every emotional pain. That is the pain of betrayal, the pain of losing someone you love, about the pain of losing a loved one. You know, maybe a loved one, someone you cared for so much, and they're no more here right now. And the pain. But you see, God is a God of victory. Our God is a God of joy. Our God is a God of miracles, signs, and wonder. Our God is a God who can change any situation. And when we trust God, He will help us to come out of any situation. When we trust God. Because sometimes it looks like, oh, where is God? I've been praying, I've been giving my offerings, I've been tithing, I've been evangelizing, but why am I still going through this pain? Our relationship with God is beyond what God can do, what God can do for us. Our relationship with Him is based on His fatherhood. And when you understand the fatherhood of God, that God loves you, that God cares for you, that God has a plan for your life, it helps to keep your hope alive. One of the ways we can sustain our hope is to trust God in His Word. When we trust God and His Word, He helps us to rise above every form of depression, loneliness, worry, and anxiety, overcoming emotional pain. The first thing we need to establish if we're going to overcome any emotional pain is to understand the love of God for us. This is the first step to coming out from every emotional crisis. Responding to the love of God. God loves you. You see, if you have this knowledge that God loves you, your days of accepting rejection from anyone will be over. When you know that God loves you, God didn't love you because you were a Christian. God didn't love you because you came to church. 
In John 3.16, he said, For God so loved the world. When he said he loved the world, he's talking about you. For God so loved you. Knowing that God loves you can open the door to your healing. Knowing that God loves you. You know, a lot of people believe that God doesn't love me. I have not done good enough. I have not done this enough. I have not done that enough. What is it? The love of God is not based on your performance. The love of God is not based on your action. The love of God was not even based on your faith. The love of God was as a result of His goodness towards you. You did not contribute to God's love towards you. It was a gift of grace willed towards your direction. The love of God is the gift of grace willed towards your direction. God loves you. It doesn't matter the mistakes you have made. It doesn't matter the how many times you have fallen into sin. It doesn't matter how many times you have done things you should have not done. It didn't change the love of God. But those who understand God's love stay away from sin. They, they live above sin because they begin to understand how the love of God can exonerate you from the lifestyle of singing. You see, God loves you. When you understand His love for you, that is the foundation for receiving emotional healing, for overcoming emotional pain. If you're going to overcome emotional pain, you, you need to know that God loves you. The love of God for your life is the key to overcoming rejection. Rejection is rooted in when you see someone said, I was rejected, I'm going through rejection. Most time, they don't know about the love of God. Once you have the revelation that God loves you, there is no rejection from anyone that can affect your vision or your dream because rejection is a choice. Responding to rejection is a choice. Someone may try to say, Apostle Fitman, I don't love you. I don't love you. I don't love your ministry. I don't love anything about you. That doesn't affect me because my faith is not built on the love of anyone my faith is built on the love of God towards me the love of God towards me does not change but anyone's love or attitude towards you may change if you offend them or you did something you shouldn't have done to them they may change their mind and they could stop supporting you or doing whatever they have been doing for you but the love of God is constant the love of God is consistent and the love of God comes with the healing strength of God so when you know that God loves you you have to believe in the love of God you have to believe in the love of God receive the love of God declare the love of God God loves me no matter what I'm going through no matter what the situation is in the natural, God loves me. When you have the revelation that God loves you, it will exonerate you from seeking for love in the wrong places. For seeking for someone's attention. A lot of people are looking for attention. They are looking for attention. They go, yeah, they're looking for attention. But God gave you the greatest attention more than 2,000 years ago. When Jesus died, that was the biggest attention. God has given us the greatest attention. But most of the time, we are not responding to the attention. We are looking for attention from our friend, from our husband, from our wife, from our children, from our boss. It's also good, but no human attention can satisfy you like God giving you attention. So if you want to overcome any emotional pain, the first step is to believe in the love of God, that God 
loves me and God has God loves me his love for me is not going to change and I receive that love by faith I walk in the love of God that God loves me number two key if you're going to overcome any emotional pain stop magnifying the pain this is so important sometimes in life we're being betrayed or someone hurted us or someone did something to us if we're not careful we'll keep magnifying it we'll keep talking about it the more you magnify your pain and your heart you are increasing the gravity of the stress it will bring the 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 pain is going to increase the, the frustration, the depression, the fear. Don't magnify the pain. Don't magnify the, the situation. You see, casting all your cares. First Peter 5 x 7. First Peter 5 x 7. He said, casting all your cares. Instead of me worrying about it, I give it over to God. Instead of me worrying about it, stressing about it, being frustrated concerning it, I give it over to God. Why should I give it over to God? He said, casting all your cares. So instead of worrying about the death of this loved one, or the loss of this job, or this betrayal, or this situation, the little things, Lord, I cast it on you, Lord. I give it over to you. You see, when you give it over to God, you are opening door for your healing. When you give it over to God, you're opening door for your healing. When you say, Lord, I commit this matter into your hand, I rest in your grace. I rest in your grace. I rest in your word. I refuse to be worried by this i refuse to allow this to stress me lord i rest in your grace so give it over to god if you do that it opens the door for your healing the next key to overcoming emotional pain is the forgiveness principle the forgiveness principle the forgiveness. Now, there are people that need to forgive God. When I say they have to, because they believe God is the one that hurt them. And they think God is responsible for the hurt. But they need to say, if you think that God is responsible for your hurt, which he's not responsible God has never been responsible for the affliction of anyone. Satan is behind the pain. So, you need to say to God, Lord, forgive me for accusing you innocently. We need to ask for forgiveness. Some of us who have done that, we need to ask God to forgive us for accusing him. You know, someone said, it's God that is taking me through this situation. But the truth of the matter is that John 10, 10 said, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you have life and have it more abundantly. So, you have to, if you have been accusing God, you have to ask him for his forgiveness. Now, the next point is you forgiving your offenders. If you don't forgive those who have offended you, it is difficult to pursue your healing process. It's difficult for you to pursue your healing process if you don't forgive those who have offended you. If you, if you if you don't if you don't if you, if you don't forgive them, it's gonna be difficult to get your healing because 
bitterness, malice, unforgiveness, and major weapons of Satan. Bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, strife, envy, jealousy. These are weapons the enemy use against people. So, you have to forgive, release, forgive. Is that possible? You don't know how they have hurted me. Listen to this. Every one of us have been hurted one way or the other. But the great among us will forgive. The great. How do you know a great person? He's quick to forgive. He's quick to say, I let go. I refuse to allow these things to, to stop me from being who I'm supposed to be. I let go. So, forgive those. Remember the first thing I said in the principle of forgiveness? If you have accused God for being responsible for your problem, ask Him for forgiveness. Lord, I'm sorry for accusing you. Next key is to forgive those who have hurted you. The next point is you forgiving yourself. You know, sometimes we blame ourselves and start condemning ourselves. If there is a need for you to forgive yourself, maybe you felt you couldn't have given so much to that relationship. You felt so you forgive yourself and move on. The reason for forgiveness is to make progress. This is the reason why we forgive when you forgive, you start the journey of progress, healing, and restoration. That's how you begin the journey of healing and restoration. Lord, I, I, I let go of this. You forgive. Forgiveness, unforgiveness is the reason why most people's prayers are not answered. One of the reasons why most of us prayers are not answered is unforgiveness. They refuse to forgive. They, they are carrying it in their hearts. So it's difficult for them to get healed or get delivered. And one of the, the, uh, the reasons why people get into bondage with Satan is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. You're watching me today. Maybe someone did something horrible. They abandoned you. They took everything from you. And you said, I can't forgive them. Listen, you will get better if you forgive. You, your reasoning, your thinking, your way of doing things will get better if you sow the seed of forgiveness. Maybe it's your husband that walked away. Maybe it's your wife that walked away. Maybe it's your son. And now they are blackmailing you. And they are accusing you falsely. And they are saying things about you that is not true. Maybe it's your co-worker. Maybe it's your girlfriend. Maybe it's your boyfriend. Maybe it's your relation. Maybe it's your ex-pastor. Maybe it's your ex-Christian friend. Whatever. Whoever. Forgiveness is the road to healing. Forgiveness is the road to healing. You forgive by faith. You, you don't say, oh, I'm forgiving them, but I, I keep remembering them in my mind. You will remember them. Why won't you remember them? Because your memory is still at work. You will, you, you will remember them. So forgiveness is what you give because you have a great future, you let go. Now let me say this to you. Forgiveness may not equal relationship. That you forgive someone doesn't mean you may relate with them at that level again, except you want to. But forgiveness is a must. Relationship is a choice. Forgiveness is a must. Relationship is a choice. Forgiveness is a must. It's a must that you must forgive. 
But relationship will come from your choice. It will come from being led by the Holy Spirit. But forgiveness is a, is a choice. You must forgive now. But relationship, you have to be led by the Spirit to keep the relationship going. So, forgiveness may not equal automatic relationship with a person. But your forgiving and getting healed is a vital aspect of making progress in your mental work, your spiritual work. Your emotional work so it's important to forgive the next point if you're going to overcome an emotional pain the next point is renewing your mind with God's Word renewing your mind with God's Word this is so important when we renew our mind with God's Word it helps us to Think in the direction of his will. All renewed mind cannot manifest the goodness of God. When a man's mind is not renewed, they cannot walk in God's goodness. They can manifest God's goodness because their mind is not renewed. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Romans 12, verse 2, it said, Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, this mind is so powerful. Our mind is so powerful that we have to renew our mind, develop our mind with God's word. The word of God is the source the, the the resources we use to change our way of thinking so the word of god is a supernatural resources it can solve so many problems it can take care of so many things praise the lord so be transformed by the renewing of your mind now the condition of your mind has a lot to do with your healing process to overcoming a situation, overcoming the circumstances, a condition of your mind. Philippians 4, verse 2. Philippians 5, 2, verse 5, sorry. Philippians 2, verse 5. It said, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. That mind of Christ comes by the word of God. That mind of Christ, it comes by the word of God. So we have to renew our mind. It will help us to flow with the Holy Ghost. It will help us to flow in the things of the Spirit. It will help us to flow in the knowledge of His will. Someone is watching this broadcast today. And the Holy Ghost said it's time to overcome this emotional heart. You know, you begin to get into God's word. You begin to pray in the spirit. You begin to pray with an expectation that God is going to make a way concerning this matter. You know, some people have not been able to sleep very well because of the heart, the pain, and they, they, they have not been able to sleep very well. They have lost their sleep because of a betrayal, because of a problem, a situation. And emotionally, they are drained. Emotionally, they are drained. They are so drained that they are no more fit physically. And people become sick first when they are sick emotionally. 85% of people that will walk into the doctor's office, the pharmacist, to get some drugs, to get some help, most of them, their problem started from their emotions. Anger, bitterness, fear, worry, depression, anxiety, loneliness, you know, all manner of emotional issues that led them into getting a medical help. Because when someone is sick emotionally, their physical body is affected. Nothing drains you like when you have an emotional crisis. Now maybe you fell into sin, maybe the sin of adultery or the sin of fornication, 
ask God for forgiveness. And also forgive yourself. When you ask God for forgiveness, you forgive yourself. Sometimes the knowledge of sin can lead to emotional pain. The knowledge of sin that, oh, I fell into sin again. Oh, God, I thought I could have not done this after I got married. I thought I could have not done this, but I've done it again. God, I'm tired. You know, some people actually took their life because they didn't know how to come out from certain situations. But listen to this. Our God is a God of mercy. It doesn't matter the area you have sinned against God or against man. God is willing to show you forgiveness. God is willing to pour his grace on you to help you fulfill your destiny. So, you got to think about sowing forgiveness. You know, when you forgive, he say forgive those who trespass. You know, when you forgive, what does it forgive you? Forgiveness is a seed. When we sow it, we reap it. Praise God. So, a lot of people are sick today because of their emotional health, the emotional situation, and they are worried, they are depressed. Maybe unpaid bills, unpaid bills. That maybe the bills keep piling, or maybe the debts, uh, the debts you're going keep increasing. Our God is a miracle worker. He's the God that can restore. He's the God that can heal. He's the God that can set free and open the door of liberty. And you are watching this broadcast right now. Emotional health should be part of your primary pursuit. To be healthy emotionally, you know, to be healthy emotionally. He said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, he said, For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Sound mind. Sound mind is so important. Some people don't have a sound mind. They are troubled. They are confused. They are worried. They are depressed. They are nagging. No. That is not how to do it. Depression will never get you better. Anger will never solve the problem. Frustration will never solve the problem. Bitterness will never solve the problem. All of these things are emotional conditions that can affect your physical health. You know, this is where a lot of people are drained. You know, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Wow. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, when you you begin to focus on the joy of the Lord. One of the ways you overcome emotional pain is to focus on the joy of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord. This is so powerful. The joy of the Lord and the goodness of God. Remember how good God has been to you. Remember how God saved you from sudden death. Remember how God helped you to get that house? Remember how God helped you to get that car? Remember how God helped you to stay married? Remember how God helped you after the divorce? You know, go and look into the archives of God's goodness and, and draw some inspiration and say, God, you have been so good. God, you have been so good. You know, when you focus on God's goodness, it is an energy booster. Nothing boosts your energy like having the revelation of the goodness of God. Nothing boosts your energy like having the revelation of the goodness of God. So focus on God's goodness. God is a good God. God is a good God. Let that be your thinking. Let that be your spirit. Oh God, I thank you. Look into your life. You will find areas where God has been good. Look at your babies. Look at your children. You know, look at your children. Look at your job. Look at your health. You know, you may say, Apostle, I don't have a job, but you have a good health. It's something to thank God for. I don't have a job, but God has been feeding you. You have not gone hungry. God has been so faithful. He has sent people to minister to you. So if you focus on the goodness of God, 
It will help you to overcome every emotional pain. It will help you to break that limitation, break that limitation, focus on God's goodness. God is good. Sometimes, you know what I used to thank God for? I used to thank God for water. This water. I come and say, God, I thank you. You can have good water to drink. God, I I thank you for the cars. God, I thank you for the home. God, I thank you for the children. God, I thank you for the clothing. God, I thank you for my Bible. God, I thank you for being in ministry. God, I thank you for those who are listening to me. You know, I just want to thank God. You know, if you can focus on God's goodness, your faith will rise above this emotional pain. And you will come out from the emotional trauma. You will come out. This emotional trauma shouldn't be there. You shouldn't be traumatized. You shouldn't be someone that is losing your mind because someone walked out of your life. You are not the first person that someone has walked out of your life. People have walked out of my life. Nobody on this earth today that people have not walked out of their life. They walked out of Jesus' life. Didn't you see it? They walked out of his life. They walked out on God's life. A fool said in his heart, there is no God. So everyone, somehow, people has walked out of their life. But the strong will focus on the future relationship that is coming. So that someone walk away from you doesn't mean the end of your life. That someone never connected to you doesn't mean the end of your life. So if you truly want to succeed, if you truly want to excel, focus on God's goodness. Get out of worry. Get out of depression. Get out of loneliness. Give yourself a hug. Celebrate yourself. Speak well of yourself. Don't don't talk yourself down. Don't get depressed. The more you talk yourself down, nobody's going to help you. You have yourself to celebrate. You have your life to live. And can I say this to you as I draw conclusion? By faith, you believe who you are. By faith, you trust God's word and said, I'm the righteousness of God and I refuse to accept depression, worry, and anxiety. I am free. I am blessed. I am blessed in my going out. I am blessed in my coming in. When you think from this perspective, nothing can be impossible to you. If you are watching this broadcast, I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray for all those who are going through emotional challenges in their, in their relationship, in their job. Wherever they are going through, whatever pain they are going through, I pray that you'll be healed right now in the name of Jesus. That you'll be delivered from every walk of darkness in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you are watching this broadcast and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus... I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, the Holy Spirit is going to lead you and you will grow in your walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to encourage you, if you're watching me for the first time or maybe you're watching me, you can send me friends requests on Facebook. On Facebook is Faith Man Obada. On Facebook, Faith Man Obada on Facebook, and also Faith Man Obada Ministry on Facebook. You can connect with me on Facebook. So go to Facebook and type Faith Man Obada, and you will never remain the same. Now, I want to also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. On YouTube is Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. When you go there, you have more than 750 videos that you can watch and more keep adding every day. Thank you for going there. So go to Faith Man Teaching on YouTube and subscribe and you will never remain the same. Tell your friends about Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. And also you can follow me on Facebook Live and you can watch me on different platforms including on Periscope. And also you can consider being, you, we, you can consider thinking about us by partnering with me. You know, I'm here preaching to you, taking this message to more people around the world. You can be my partner today and say, Apostle, I want to stand with you to help your voice to reach more people around the world. And you can do that on PayPal. On PayPal is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. On PayPal is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. So true partnership will take this message of our Lord Jesus Christ to more and more people around the world. 
will take this message. A lot of people write us their testimonies. Some will share their healing report with us, their praise report with us, telling us how God is bringing them through, giving them victory as a result of this teaching ministry. So today, consider giving an offering and sowing into the ground of this ministry. Together, we're using it to push this gospel to greater places for more people to hear it. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my partner. God bless you. I welcome you into a new life, a life of dominion and power. And don't forget this. There is greatness in you.